What's up, YouTube? What's up, Intercession for Generation followers? This is Russell and Williams, the founder and blogger at Intercession for a Generation, as well as founder of the Holy Next World movement. Yep, an identity that is uh, basically founded on Jesus Christ. We're not looking to me for our identity or uh, anything else, but we're looking to Jesus Christ and that can never be taken away from us. So today I am going to be talking about trusting God in the in-between time. So the in-between time is, is where we're waiting on something and that time can be very frustrating. It can cause some people to become hardened. It can cause some people to lose their faith. It can cause some people to depend upon the wrong thing. Uh, there are many things that we could be waiting on. For example, uh, we could be waiting as singles to be in a, a healthy, godly relationship, a God-honoring and a God-fearing relationship. It's pretty easy to get into a relationship. Anybody can get into a relationship. But to have a God-honoring and a God-centered and a God-pleasing relationship, God has to do that. And that's something that we have to wait on. Uh, many people are waiting to reunite with a loved one that they've lost. So they're waiting for Jesus to come back or Jesus to... Uh, uh, resurrect everyone when he does come back or uh, they're waiting for their time to pass on and uh, for them to reunite in heaven uh, with that person that they lost who was also a believer. Uh, it could be a sickness or an illness uh, that someone has where they're waiting to be healed in their body or they're waiting for the full use of their bodies. Maybe they're waiting for a gift. Maybe someone who's unemployed, they're waiting on a job. In that in-between time where we're waiting on the promise of God to be fulfilled, uh, there are some things that we're going to have to do so that we do not lose the faith. So I'm going to be talking about uh, an example in the Bible uh, where it appeared as though some people who were close to Jesus almost kind of lost faith, although they did not. Uh, so uh, some of the things that I'm going to focus on is uh, seeking God's greater purpose in allowing the uh, wait time. Seeking what is God's greater purpose in this. Uh, also, entering into God's rest while you're waiting. It's so important to enter into God's rest. So we're going to talk about that. And then lastly, uh, we're going to talk about seeking God's grace while we're in that wait time because in that wait time uh we're often weak in that time we we're our weaknesses and and our, our frailties or our infirmities are exposed to us and sometimes we don't know how to handle it uh, so we'll be talking about those things on today so i'm going to start out with talking about lazarus and uh Lazarus was one of Jesus' friends, and he had two sisters named Mary and Martha. So uh, Jesus was somewhere with his disciples, and Mary and Martha sent a messenger to Jesus to say, Hey, your close friend, Lazarus, is sick. So Jesus kind of ignores uh, the messenger and uh, continues a couple of more days uh, with his disciples and whatever it is that he's doing with his disciples, but he gives a word. And oftentimes we're, when we're in that in-between time, God will give us a word and we have to hold on to that word and to believe in that word in order to enter into God's rest because it's through faith that we enter into God's rest according to Hebrews 4 and 10. Faith comes by hearing, hearing comes by the word of God. So we have to get the word of the Lord for our situation. And I'll be doing a video in the future about seeking God uh, so that you will know how to go before God and how to get the word of the Lord for yourself and for your own situation. Okay, so Jesus gives a word and he says, to his disciples. This sickness is not unto death, but it is for the glory of God. Now, what is the glory of God? The glory of God is a manifestation of who Christ is. Basically, it is a revelation. It is a revealing. It is a uh, uh, intimate 
showing of who God is. So God is basically inviting you into saying, hey, this is who I am. This is what I want you to see. Well, uh, Jesus was seen by his disciples. He was seen by Mary. He was seen by Martha. He was seen by the town's men and women as a healer. They all knew that he could heal the sick. And that's part of the reason why a messenger was sent to Jesus. Uh, they all knew that he could heal the sick, but they did not know that he could resurrect the dead. And that's the reason why uh, Jesus uh, allowed the situation, even though it seemed as though he had disappointed his friends, even though it seemed as if he was taking too long, even though it seemed as if he had let his friends down, what he was doing was allowing the situation so that he could be revealed and so that his glory could be revealed and we could come into an another level of intimacy and another level of knowing just who Jesus Christ is. So Jesus uh, decides to go back with his disciples to this town where Mary, Martha, and Lazarus are. And he gets to the town, and before he even gets into the town, Martha runs out and she says, If you had been here, my brother would still be alive. Nevertheless, whatever I believe whatever you ask God for, he'll do it. So she was kind of going back and forth in her faith like sometimes we do in that in-between time. We go back and forth. We worry. We feel like we feel a lot of pressure. A lot of times we panic. We try to figure out what am I going to do? You know, what am I going to do uh, now that this situation is the way that it is? But God had it under control and Jesus had it un under control. And he let her know, he said that if you believe, you will see the glory of God. And so he continued to approach the town. And that's when Mary came out and she also met him. And she came out weeping. And a lot of people were following her that were trying to comfort her in, in the house. And um, they followed her out to meet Jesus. And she again, she cried out with such grief uh, to Jesus saying, if you had been here, our brother would still be alive. The Bible says that Jesus began to groan within himself and Jesus wept. So Jesus took a moment to uh, empathize with Mary and he took a moment to empathize with her pain. God understands that it isn't easy for us to wait on him in the in-between time. It's not easy at all because the situation stays the same for so long. There's a scripture in Hebrews uh, that this reminds me of, and it is Hebrews 4.15 uh, through 16. And uh, 4.15 says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet did not sin. So, um, I looked up uh, infirmities in uh, the Greek dictionary, and uh, some of the definitions that I got was want of strength, Weakness, illness, suffering, calamity, frailty. Uh, I also got refers to an ailment that deprives someone of enjoying or accomplishing what they would like to do. Lastly, this is the one that stuck out to me the most. This one says expresses the weakening influences of the illness or a particular problem, especially as someone becomes wrongly overly dependent so very interesting because our weaknesses and our illnesses or our, our, our infirmity or those things that are in our lives that we cannot change on our own but we have to depend upon the Lord to change they can very easily lead us into sin and that's part of the reason why the scripture says but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are yet he did not sin our, our infirmities or our weaknesses can easily drive us to the point of sin. They can easily drive us to the point of depending on things to try to give us relief. Things such as vices. So it could be 
fornication, alcoholism, masturbation, uh, fantasy lust, drugs, anything to try to provide immediate relief. And and you know what? I noticed in, in reading in uh, Hebrews 4, and it talks about how we enter into God's rest uh, through believing. The Bible also talks about there are those who could not enter into God's rest because they did not believe and therefore they chose disobedience. A lot of times when we're in that in-between time and we need to trust God in that in-between time, it's easy to become hardened. And if you read the whole chapter in Hebrews chapter 4, it talks about those who became hardened at the word of God. It says, harden not your heart uh, when the word of God comes along in this chapter in Hebrews chapter 4. And it talks about like, like some others did when they provoked God. And it's talking about the children of Israel when they were in the wilderness. There were some of them that heard the word of God. They did not believe and therefore they chose to disobey the word of God, which means they did not enter into God's rest. There's something very important about getting the word of the Lord and trusting in that word to the point of resting. And then what else really stood out to me, it says that those that have entered into God's work have also ceased from their own works. So how many of us are trying to fix this situation on our own? How many of us are single and we're trying to put together a relationship uh, and make it work and make it Christ-centered on our own? And we're not resting in the word of God that says, hey, I got somebody for you. That says, delight myself in you and I'll give you the desires of my heart. God will give you a direct word specifically for your situation. He'll give you a direct word for you. And you can hold on to that word and you can rest in that word. Those that have rested in God have ceased from their own works. This is so interesting. Um, but that's not even what I wanted to bring out. I wanted to bring out um, Hebrews 4, 15 and 16, where it talks about how we have a priest who, who's been touched with the feeling of our infirmities, speaking about Jesus Christ and how he empathizes with us. God does not look down on us for our weaknesses. God does not look down on us for our infirmities, but he empathizes with us and he notes that we are tempted to sin because of it, because some of us are tempted uh, to depend upon sin for relief. But God is saying you don't have to sin. He went through the very same things and he did not sin. This is what God advises us to do. In the next verse, verse 16, it says, Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. So God realizes that there's a need, there's a weakness, there's something that we have that has not necessarily been met just yet. We're tempted to sin, but instead of sinning, he's saying, what I want you to do is I want you to come to me. I want you to come to me. I want you to learn how to depend upon me in this in-between time. I want you to learn how to depend upon me in this time of weakness. And I will be able to sustain you. I will be able to pro provide grace for you. Grace is supernatural strength. It's supernatural ability to do that which we otherwise would not have the power to do. Okay, so getting back to the story with... Uh, Lazarus, Mary, and Martha, uh, Jesus, he, he, um, he empathized with them and he, he groaned within himself and he wept. And as he was weeping uh, and as he was groaning within himself, he was being judged by the people. There's also a temptation to judge God uh, in that in-between time. God, what are you doing? God, are you there? There's nothing wrong with asking God questions. He wants us to come to him and ask some questions. That's how we get his grace. He wants us to be confident, like the scripture said, and come to him and ask him questions. But these people were asking questions to accuse God. Isn't this the same one who was able to heal the sick? In other words, why can't he heal? Why could not he have healed Lazarus? Why did he just let him die? But God had a greater purpose. And that's the thing in the in-between time. We need to savor the greater purpose of God. The greater purpose was for God to be revealed in a new way. 
for Jesus Christ to be revealed in a new way because they only knew Christ as one who could heal the sick. They did not know that he had the power to raise the dead. So one great thing about this in-between time is the ability to get to know God in a new way, in a unique way. And, and for some of us, like I said, it, it, it's not the same thing. For some of us, it may be the loss of a loved one. For some of us, it may be our singleness. Uh, Paul talks about that he had a thorn in the flesh that made him weak, and he consulted God about it. And God told him, my grace is sufficient for you. In other words, I'm not going to take this away from you right now because I have a purpose in this. And the purpose in, in his situation was so that he would not become lifted up in pride because he got a lot of revelation from God. So God said, instead of taking this away from you, what I'm going to do is give you grace to be able to handle this situation. My grace, my supernatural ability is going to be enough for you. So you have to seek God about whatever it is that's in your life that you're waiting on God for or whatever it is uh, where you feel like you're in that in-between time of the promise and what you're going through and in that time where you have to just trust God. Seek God. See what the word of the Lord is for your life and for your situation. Rest in whatever that word is that God gives you. You. And and don't downplay the situation. Uh, don't dishonor the, the situation or the season, but instead be thankful for the season. Be thankful that you can see Christ revealed in a new way. Be thankful that God chose you for his purpose, whatever purpose that is, to reveal himself on the earth. So, yeah, that's pretty much what I have for you guys. There's a purpose in that in-between time where we're trusting God and we're waiting on his promise. So don't allow that in-between time to discourage you, but rather savor the purpose of God and, and savor the intimacy with God. Look at this as a time to grow your intimacy with God, to learn about God in a new way. That's enough right there to, to sustain me. That's enough right there to satisfy me, just to know him in an into, intimate way because when you think about who God is, and the fact that God wants to reveal himself to us. It's so beautiful. And his grace is enough for us. His grace is sufficient for us. He's not looking down on us for our weaknesses. But he has grace stored up for us. So tap into that grace. And uh, that's pretty much all I have for you all. Uh, be encouraged. Continue to follow my blog, www.intercession, the number four, a generation.org. Again, that's www.intercession, the number four, a generation.org. And also uh, purchase the book. I'm an author as well. I've written the single Christian woman's guide, wisdom and getting to our God ordained man of promise. Thank you for watching and have a great day.